For more on the new challenges facing retailers and consumers, let's bring in Bill Simon, former Walmart U.S. CEO. Bill, how, how high do you think the bar... Oh, and Simeon Siegel also joining us, <laughs> retail analyst. We're trying to work on your audio, Simeon. We'll, we'll get to you in a second. But, Bill, how high do you think the bar is here in terms of bad news related to COVID and a new variant for, for to slow down the trend that we have seen in consumer, which is very strong? Well, I think in the short term, in the short run here, particularly Black Friday weekend and everything else that's going on, I don't think you'll see much of a reaction. I think as you're as your reporter just 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 kind of told everybody, people were out shopping today looking for the deals, and and they're you know the the, the stores were very crowded, uh, prices were very good and aggressive, particularly in the big stores, big box chains, Costco, Target, Walmart, and and of course online and Amazon. So I think in the short run, no, and in the long run, we're going to have to take a look and see what really happens with the new variant. Well, the, the stocks didn't work today, Simeon. Simeon Siegel joins us, an analyst who covers retail from BMO Capital Markets. And obviously concerns about travel now. We're starting to see restrictions go up about luxury in particular. How nervous would you be? How, did you field calls about the variant today or about Black Friday? Uh, mall crawl, and no one in the mall felt like the variant was here. So I know the news will go ahead of the reality, but people are out. So I think. We're going to see winners and losers rather than clusters, and I think that's going to be the story. I think there are certain brands that improved pricing power. There are certain ones that didn't, and they're going to. All of them will deal with the externalities that they face, whether it's the variant, whether it's supply chain. And uh, Simeon, based on some of the really dramatic moves we've seen in response to certain results uh, so far in the last couple of weeks in retail, what does it tell you about investors? kind of posture toward this group, their expectations for whether, in fact, there's an opportunity to kind of make it up in the next few months. I'm looking at Gap. I'm looking at Nordstrom, looking at Best Buy to some degree. It just seems as if there's uh, a real lack of, of patience on the part of investors. It's a great point. I'll tell you this. I was looking at it this morning. We have never seen the volatility on stock-driven moves. So on the day of the report, the amount of companies that are up more than up or down 20%, is the most we've seen in years. And the same thing up 15, 10, the volatility matters, it's a lot. So I think what's happening now is Gap and Nordstrom were the last to report. So the problem is now we're all distorted into thinking, we compound that with our Red Friday today, and we think, oh man, this must've been a really bad retail earnings season. The reality is it wasn't, right? There were also companies like Capri and Victoria's Secret and Under Armour and Tapper, like plenty of companies actually were up. 15 to 20%. So I think that what we're going to start doing is breaking apart these clusters. I think when COVID hit, it was retail is dead, then retail is alive, then retail is dead. There's going to be company specific stories. And I think that unfortunately, yesterday or, the, or last week, the end of the earnings cycle soured everyone's view. But I don't think that, mean, that doesn't mean there's not opportunities, especially on days like today. So I think what you're going to want to do as the holiday season gets behind us, you're going to want to look at which of these brands, everyone's prices are. Right. There's no inventory study. We've heard about the scarcity factor. But the question is, who actually has pricing power versus who simply saw fewer promotions? Because anyone who saw fewer promotions, well, promotions are going to come back. Right? As a shopper, you can be comfortable that that's going to happen. But the brands that actually structurally improved their business, I mean, think about it. Stores that made it through COVID are probably healthier than they were before. So th that's the dynamic that I think we want to focus on. We want to start splitting apart winners and losers as opposed to is retail live or is retail dead? How do you think about winners and losers, Bill? Oh, I agree with Simeon. I, I think you're seeing um, scale and, and size really make an impact now. And you'll see uh, the, the big guys able to get product when product is scarce in smaller stores. I think you'll see um, it, it, particularly what we saw during the, the peak of COVID last year, um, people trying to make one trip. So big, if they have to go out at all, the big boxes will do pr particularly well. And as Simeon said, you know, there's going to be winners. The people who weathered COVID are, are stronger than they were when they went in, and they're facing less competition because many of the smaller ones didn't weather COVID. So I, I think look, look towards, uh, you know, the big retailers, both online and in physical retail, and I think you'll, you'll see some opportunities. 